and those extra configuration settings would be these two settings. It would be DNS, which is a domain name system. When we type in google.com to get to Google, our computer doesn't know anything about what google.com happens to be. We really, to be able to get that traffic to go to google.com, it needs to be an IP address. But we didn't type in the IP address of Google. Do you know what the IP address of Google is? Me either. We type in google.com. Behind the scenes, our computer recognizes that we're giving it google.com. And it says, hmm, if I need to go to Google, I need to figure out what that is. Let me go ask a DNS server what Google happens to be. And so across the internet, we have many, many DNS servers that are used that our computer will go out, communicate to that DNS server, and ask it, do you happen to know what google.com is? If that DNS server knows, it will report back to you. If it doesn't know, it asks whatever the next DNS server is that it knows about out there. Hey, can you tell me where Google is and what that DNS is set for Google? Eventually, we then get a reply back that says, oh, you need to go to google.com. Then you need to go to 74.125.67.104. And at that point, our computer goes, aha, I know how to get there. I need to go out to my router. And it sends that traffic out to my router. And magically, it ends up at Google and comes back to us. That none of that would happen unless we had that DNS server. So if you need to be able to communicate out to a different subnet, and you only know the name of those devices, you have to then know where your DNS servers are and how they're configured. Before any of that happens, you have to be given an IP address, a subnet mask, a default gateway, and the name of a DNS server. And you could configure all of those in your system manually. There may be situations on a server, maybe a, a static configuration that's given to you by your internet service provider. We really don't see those much anymore. Almost everything is done automatically. And it's done automatically through the use of DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So instead of you typing in the IP address manually, the subnet mask manually on your computer, and all of those pieces individually, and it makes it very easy to make a mistake when you type those in. Instead, when your computer starts up, you've already told your computer, just use DHCP. And your computer will then out, go out there and say, is there a DHCP server anywhere, anywhere? Are you there? And the DHCP server will respond back, yes, here I am. What do you need? Our computer then says, oh gosh, I need an IP address. I need a subnet mask. I need a, a DNS. I need a gateway. Can you send me all of that, please? And then that machine, that DHCP server, is in charge of handing off that particular setting for your computer and making sure that nobody else gets the same IP address that you have. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to communicate out on the network. Let's look at a configuration in Windows Vista of where you would find these pieces of information and how you would configure it. In Windows Vista, it's very easy to see the IP address configuration. Almost everything is in the control panel. So with networking, it's certainly in there as well. We can choose our control panel. And inside the control panel is a network and sharing center. If we start the network and sharing center, you'll see exactly how your computer is configured visually, where on our computer it goes out to a network and then to the internet. If you'd like to change the configuration of this adapter cards that are inside of this computer, we need to manage our network connections. And it brings up a list of all of the different adapters. I only have one in this particular computer. And if I right mouse click, I can do a lot of different things. If you look at the properties for this card, you can choose the properties. Windows says we're changing something dramatic here, so you need to confirm this. Yes, we will confirm. And it brings up a list of the different uh, for this adapter card, the different protocols and the different capabilities available for this card. I want to change the IPv4 information. So I'm going to select that and click Properties. And here's where we would manually add the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway, along with DNS server information for this computer. If you would like to put that in manually, you could. Or if you would rather use DHCP to automatically find that, we can choose to automatically obtain an IP address and or automatically obtain DNS server information that is separated out in this IPv4 configuration. If you wanted to see what it was set to, we can cancel all the way back to this adapter card. There's an option for status. And if we click that, it shows us that we are connected to the internet via IPv4. Connected via IPv6, I do not have an IPv6 router. So it says I have limited connectivity, probably just for my local subnet here. If I click Details, it will tell you exactly what your physical address is. Here's my IPv4 address. I'm 10.0.2.15 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 
my default gateway is 10.0.2.2. And the DNS servers I'm going to, Google's DNS servers at 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. All of that was given to me automatically through DHCP. Now, to be able to see this in Windows XP, it's a little bit different. Here's my Windows XP desktop. And although it's a little bit different, it's not too far off the mark. If you go to your control panel, you still have options in here for network connections. And here is the adapter card. And from here, very similar to what we were just looking at, there is a properties option. And you can choose, in this case, IP protocol, TCP IP for internet protocol, and look at the properties. And this looks almost exactly like the Vista side, where I can manually add an IP address and a DNS server into this mix. If you go to the status on here, you right mouse click and choose status. Again, you've got similar views of what's going on. And if you click the support tab, you get the information that tells you this is DHCP. Here's your IP address and your subnet mask. And the details option gives you a similar set of information to what we saw earlier in those other screens. So configuring IP addresses, subnet masks, gateways, and DNS is very simple from this Windows front end, whether you're doing it automatically or whether you're putting it in manually. Let's see what we remember about protocols and our addressing on our computers. Our first question is, which proprietary Microsoft protocol was used in early versions of Microsoft Windows? And if you recall, we put up a number of those different protocols at the beginning. And the one for Microsoft is called NetBuoy. It's an addition to NetBIOS that is very specific to Microsoft machines. You don't really see that much anymore. These days, Microsoft is using TCP IP to communicate its NetBIOS information from place to place. But back then, it was NetBuoy that did everything for us. What class of IP addresses is 192.168.23.55? Well, if we have a look at our class list, if you remember, there was that big list of class numbers. And if it starts with 192, it must be a class C. Here's our list again. Starts with a 192, definitely between 192 and 223 is a class C network. So a nice little piece of information to memorize and put away for your exam. And finally, which protocol is used to resolve a fully qualified domain name to an IP address? If you recall, we had to type in google.com. But behind the scenes, it was a domain name system server that was able to change that from google.com to the IP address so that we can then communicate to the Google server. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our 220-701 section 4.1. We've looked at protocols. We've looked at addressing. And we've looked at all of these IP class configurations. Quite a lot in this particular module. But hopefully now you've got an understanding of what you need to know to get up and running with networking and different addresses on your computer. If you'd like to watch many other a videos, participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can find everything at our website at 3aplus.com.